Welcome to America's Heroes Group. Welcome back to America's Heroes Group. This time with our roundtable partner, Veterans Legislative Voice. June is LGBTQ Pride Month until you Saturday, June 11th, 2022. Our host is Cliff Kelly. Our co-host is Sean Claiborne. That's me. And our exec producer is Glenda Smith. Our digital media producer is Ivan Ortega of Scouts Honor Productions. And our partner, Stephanie Collot, is on the line with us. She is a U.S. Army uh, Reserve Sergeant First Class Veteran and the founder and creator of the Veterans Legislative Voice. And we're going to talk about Fort McClellan Registry falling off their Honoring Our Pact Act. So Fort McClellan is falling off of their Honoring Our Pact Act. Stephanie, what can you tell us about this? Okay, so um, the Honor and Our Pact Act has been the most comprehensive bill thus far that has at least made it this far through Congress. Um, most notably, it covers the burn pits uh, exposures and any of the veterans that went to the Gulf. It includes a lot of different things to pretty much add more presumptive conditions for those veterans and also establishes a system for uh, the Veterans Affairs to actually establish presumptives. Um, because they don't have an official way. So that's one of the ways it'll actually give it some uh, structure and standard. Um, but there was a number of things that was also on the bill that does not include burn pits. Um, Agent Orange, for example, they're adding two more conditions to the presumptive list. Um, PFAS uh, had a registry as well, but today I want to focus on Fort McClellan's registry um, amendment that was on there, but then the pretty much the deal that the senators made the Republican senators made with the Democrats is that they took off a handful of things, and that includes the Fort McClellan registry. Um, for anyone that don't know, Fort McClellan is uh, in Anniston, Alabama. Uh, it was originally bracked in 1999, I believe, but then it has been uh, pretty much in service for about 80 years. And it was also the center for the, um, Army, the Women's Army Corps the WAC, and that was there for decades, and that was also where many women veterans went to uh, basic training. The problem with that location is that there was a chemical company nearby that emitted a lot of different bad chemicals in the area, and they've done it in a number of different ways and and contaminated the entire environment. Um, The town of Inniston actually was awarded $700 million dollars from this company called Monsanto, Monsanto if yeah. I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, Monsanto. And yeah. yes, and then, uh, but nothing for a veteran that served there and spent a number of months or years on that location. And so now they're getting the shaft again and not getting that registry, which would take them closer to the pres- presumptive conditions for VA disability and healthcare. Hmm. Monsanto's been in a lot of uh, trouble. They are the people that made the uh, Roundup uh, chem- weed chemical uh, that was causing people a lot of health care problems and um, and also went out, reg- vigilantly went after farmers. A very powerful, very, very wealthy uh, business that most people probably never even heard of. Um, a mo- one of the most yeah. powerful uh, businesses in the United States. It controls a lot of what you eat and what is grown in this country and around the world. Um, they make seeds, and then also they have their own little police force that will arrest you, like come after you and harass you. If you steer their seeds, evidently, um, but oh. this is a this is a pretty serious topic because we're talking about the health of, 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 of military people. Why do you think this went this route? Why do you think what fell apart? How did it fall apart? Well, there's a number of different reports and studies that have been done, and of course, these studies didn't actually happen when the um, chemical company was at their height of poisoning the environment. So. There's no way for us to really know how much was minted at that time. And so there's a number of studies that were done in the 90s and in the 2000s by the EPA, by the government, and they say that the environment is fine. It's all good. But the problem is is that that doesn't tell us what it was like back then. So that's one of the problems that really happens. And another thing is that the House representative that is actually in charge of that district has been against getting a Fort McClellan registry ever since it's, the bill keeps getting introduced year after year. He is completely against it, and he thinks the environment's fine. He doesn't know anybody that got sick, so he thinks everything's gravy there. Hmm. So what Completely do you, ridiculous. So what's, what's, the, what's the remedy? How do we fix this, and what needs to be done? Um, so there is an individual bill for the PFA, or excuse me, for uh, Fort McClellan Registry. 
So I really want to encourage those to contact their Congress people. And I also think that they can, there's still a chance to get the, um, the, the portion of that bill added back on because they're still doing amendments in the Senate. They have not done a vote yet. So that's one of the things I really do want people to at least try to contact their um, Congress people to get that instituted because they can get it back on the Honoring Our Pact Act. And you think it's, it's, uh, it's going to, what's, the, what's the odds of success? It's slim. I'll be honest. It's hard because that bill has been, um, it has been, had a lot of changes recently. And for everybody that doesn't know, the Honoring or PACT Act is HR 3967. I wanted to make sure I got that number right before I threw it out there. And so they're still doing a lot of th- changes to that bill. So there's a lot of chances and, um, the Senate Majority Leader has already stated that uh, Chuck Schumer, he already stated that they're, they plan on voting for this bill as a whole before the session ends. So they're taking their time on getting all the edits down and added then and get everybody happy. But I really want people to start calling their Congress people to actually uh, get this part added back on. So what, what I still don't understand. What is the real what's what are the what is why is it that the it seems like there's a pushback to try to get something cleaned up. That's what I'm quite right. Get. Well, it's more than just getting clean up. So a registry for people that don't don't know. Um, so they, for example, they did the burn pits registry, and that is basically veterans that have served there are encouraged to log in, tell them what uh, conditions that you pretty much have developed since serving there. Where did you serve? When when did you serve? And all the different information and whether you saw or lived near the burn pits and things like that. And that actually helps the VA understand of pretty much whether those veterans have a higher than normal rate of cancer, um, developing conditions like asthma, uh, chronic rhinitis and sinusitis, those type of things. That's the reason why they got added to the presumptive list. Those type of things actually really does help the VA understand what's going on and then they can do the next process of adding the presumptive conditions Mm -hmm. and that's how we got the honor inner pact act pretty much in the first place is because of the work that they've done on the registry a registry on fort mcclellan will help out a lot of people trying to understand whether where we're having the cancer clusters who's actually what's the top 10 conditions that people are most likely to develop after serving there now, is there, a, is there a big is there a concern where veterans may not get the care that they need to if they yeah. develop um, these types of like, cancers and illnesses and things like that? That is very it's very true because what happened? Well, stereotypically, most veterans in the past couple of decades until very recently, they exit the military without immediately filing for any VA disability or even the health care. Um, so, and then in the last decade or two, it's actually been taught and really became a really gr- uh, great conversation for people to understand how to file for those. And when I used to work for a VA disability law firm, we were getting veterans in that had served in the Korean War, peacetime, uh, Vietnam War, all the way up, I mean, till recently. And they are in various different stages of their medical going on. And Having that enrollment in healthcare in the first place is very helpful for everybody. But the problem is that a lot of, if veterans don't get the VA disability they need, they might not receive the health care that they need because of their service. Because of the time frame of, and the long time frame and the lack of uh, service or medical attention on those conditions makes it harder for people to actually get VA disability approved. And so there, because if there's a big gap in service or a ba- big gap in medical records, the VA is less likely to approve for VA disability if uh, they don't think that the condition is connected to service. Because even back then, many people didn't go to the doctor for simple things like headaches or scraped knees or a broken foot, because I know a few people that have done that. Mm-hmm. And they don't get seen, so it doesn't get documented. So then it doesn't they don't get VA disability for it. And if, for those that don't know VA disability, if you get under 40, 50%, if you have 
pretty much 40% and under, you only get treated for the conditions that you have connected to service. If you're 50% and higher, most of your um, health care is taken care of by the VA. 50% is the target for everybody because then you can actually get vitamins, medications, um, you can get eyeglasses done, you can get all those nice things help for you and pretty much you have a nice, longer, happier life because of this treatment and pretty much health care. It seems so silly Sorry. that we have that we have that dichotomy between like if you if you have forty percent you get you only get treated for your actual illness or service connected. If it's over forty percent then or fifty percent threshold, then now you can actually get real health care. That seems like a right. dumb, dumb stupidness. I know. <laughs> I know. It's really I mean, why, crazy. why would you do that? Like what's the I mean and the thing of it is we spend so much money on weaponry and stuff that we don't even use. And, yes. and so we spend stuff, almost $800 billion a year, 700 to $800 billion a year on weapons. And that has nothing mm-hmm. to do with veterans benefits. That's just the budget for, for keeping the military going this period. We, you spend like about $200 billion on all of the benefits. So, keep them, so look, put this in perspective for the audience. Yeah. you got about 2 million people that are in the military now, roughly. I think it's about 2 million people, maybe mm-hmm. 3 or something like that. It might have dropped after Afghanistan. But say between one and a half, three million people in the military serving currently right now, we spent seven hundred, eight hundred billion dollars on that operation. You have twenty one million veterans across the country. They're served in every place from Vietnam to Grenada to Kosovo and Bosnia and Iraq and Afghanistan. You have all of these veterans that are there. You spend two hundred billion dollars on not just not just the, for health care. That includes all benefits for those 21 million people. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, you still, so, it, what, so what's the big deal if you spend an extra billion dollars or probably, probably not even that much? Probably, it's probably a, we're talking probably about a, maybe a, a $100 million problem. Right. And the thing is, is that if they get good treatment and prevention now, they're more likely to not have debilitating conditions later. I mean, I always argue for dental health care for all veterans because poor dental hygiene can lead to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, dementia, all these things that causes long, long term care. I mean, in so many things can make things worse. If you just had the preventative medicine for these veterans, it would actually save more money in the long run. Mm hmm. That it makes too much sense. I know. <laughs> we always say that statement. It makes too much sense to yeah. do those things. Yeah, it's, it gets very frustrating. Yeah, I know, I know. It is like, you know. But the thing of it is, I mean, we, we can do things about it if we get people involved and maybe get uh, more civilians involved to really talk to their senators yes. and congressmen and make sure that they know that, hey, this is something that we don't like. We, and it's, it's not like it's not fixable. It's something that's very, very fixable. It's not like it's not too expensive. That you can actually save right. money in the long run. And the thing is, is that the veterans, they do have a negative impact on the economy if, in the local areas if they're not taken care of. They're more likely to be homeless. They're more likely to have an uh, alcohol and substance abuse disorder. They're more likely to be in jail, actually, because of the mental health issues that they also have. There's a lot of things that actually puts a strain on the civilian system that people don't realize that taking care of these veterans would actually help out the civilians. Mm-hmm in the long run as well. Yeah, and there's a lot, cause a lot of the things that we, when we do treatment and, and research in medicine and healthcare, we, we talked about a lot with the Jesse Brown VA here in Illinois. Yes. Um, a lot of that technology and research trickles into the civilian population. I mean, we have so many it things. Does. It was a Neil, Neil deGrasse, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson wrote a book, um, which I have at home now, I just my camera the name of it, but basically it talks about the military's uh, connection and relationship with um, science and technolo- technological development across the country. And things like the yeah. internet, things like you know prosthetics, things like uh, radio, uh, all that stuff came from the military. From military, so when we mm-hmm. when we stifle these types of, um, when we do the wrong thing, because not just about um, the the what the benefit what you get out of it, but just doing the right thing for people who serve your country. It seems so despicable yeah. that you would have people um, suffering illnesses who are trying to serve their country and you putting them in harm's way. They're trying to protect mm-hmm. the nation from uh, keep the nation out of harm's way. But we put them all these precarious situations where they're in harm's way themselves, and that's unnecessarily. Yeah. And one of the things with Fort McClellan is some people say, oh, well, you know, that's from a civilian company or, you know, the government wasn't responsible for that. Well, for Camp Lejeune, 
for that con- water contamination issue, which there are co- presumptive conditions for, that actually goes back to a dry cleaners business that was improperly dumping their chemicals in the water systems, and that's how it got con- contaminated, off post. So Congress has already put in presumptives for people that served at that location, but they have yet to do it on Fort McClellan. And this disproportionately affects women veterans because that's where they went to basic training. That's where their center was. I mean, the entire command for the women corps was there. It's so crazy how that can be so affected on one gender because of that and it's being ignored so it's really frustrating many women veterans that are out there right now so does anything happen to the private contractors uh, from your experience is what's the what rep, what um punishments are done or dealt out to the people that actually do these types of uh, they're actually doing the acts of poisoning people on these bases oh very little i mean i there's I was a victim of with KBR and their issues in uh, Kuwait and Iraq because they had um, faulty wiring. They had to shut down the water, the um, latrines in the showers because the faulty wiring would actually electrocute people. Wow, I heard about that. Yes, I was in Kuwait for that and couldn't shower for a month during Ramadan where it's like one, it's very hot and horrible time frame. Um, so those type of things happen. Very little actually happens to them, and it's frustrating. Right now in Congress, there's issues with the base housing because contractors do the base housing in a number of bases, and they have improperly taken care of the house. Like, they don't take care of the houses and neglect. So they, these houses are full of uh, mold that have been affecting the kids, the families of these military people, and they're not taking care of it. They've had congressional hearings over this, and they're still doing wrong, even though they owned up to doing wrong. And so, so little is not done. Mm -hmm. It's so frustrating. So little is done against them. So has there ever been any backlash against the corporations that do this, Um, like in the media or or corporations that's that powerful where they're able to to keep this information from getting to the public? Because, I mean, people could boycott. People can, can stop buying products. They can tank their stock yeah, price. It's, I, I, I honestly don't have a lot of hope with that because, I mean, KBR is still up and running, and uh, their wiring killed a number of Special Forces uh, soldiers. Uh, so I am not sure about that. But nothing happened. So, I, remember, I remember that. I don't remember the, all the details, yeah. but I remember hearing that in the in the past. Did anything happen? I know it wasn't KBR. Like, like, Didn't somebody try to sue KBR or something like that? Let me, I'm going to Google it right now. I remember there was hearings and a lot of different things going on, but it, it was so frustrating that, uh, and then with that stuff going on. And that also raises another question. If you're, if you're in a, if you're in a, in a, in a foreign country, what laws do you follow? Do you, do you, are they still under U.S. jurisdiction? Are you under the UCMJ? I mean, what are the remedies for the soldier if a soldier is harmed by a corporation or a, or a private Well, contract? actually, uh, uh, CNN said back in July 28, 2009, KBR case against them uh, was dismissed by a judge because family that. sued. I remember that, yeah. Federal court cases in uh, Texas and Louisiana. And there was something, and that's the question I had, there was something to do with, if I remember right, the, the, the jurisdiction or they were a contractor or, not the, or, the, or related to the military, so the military said you can't sue the military. Well, it's it's also because they were allowed to use the actual permit and requirements for housing of that country, Mm. which is very low and very bad. They were allowed to use their standards versus the U.S. standards. That's crazy. So if you're, if you're, this like in Chicago, there's a part of Chicago, people don't realize it's not Mm -hmm. actually in the borders of Chicago. We're taking for, let's use the obvious part of it. O'Hare Airport is not in the physical confines of Chicago. It's actually yeah. in the suburbs. However, if you mm-hmm. step foot in that airport, you are abiding by City of Chicago laws because it's owned by yeah. City of Chicago. So every, when mm-hmm. you go, when we set up a base anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, you're on military property. Government property. And the government's rules are for that. And that's the reason why, like, for some states have recreational marijuana and medical marijuana. You're not allowed to bring that on to a federal location right. federal buildings federal bases those type of things so yes the same rules apply it's frustrating when you're in 
other countries and it's not. So like embassies in other countries, that's U.S. property. That's U.S. law is on that embassy. But outside the embassy, it's all that of that individual country. Right. That's so crazy, though. Yes. So why, I don't understand yes. how they even got through. How did the KBR get out of that one? Uh, that would be a lot more reading than I'll have to do, and we could talk about that at another time. Yeah, that's just crazy, though. I mean, I can't see. I mean, I, this is yeah. what I'm talking about. The, 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 the person who always takes the fall is the veteran, it seems like, in these types of cases. I mean, because when, yes, when it's coming, it and, and that's not even the thing of it is, is that you could take care of the veteran, and not, just, not to be cynical mm-hmm. about it, but you could take care of the veteran and leave the, yes. the business alone. If you, if, you, if you wanted yeah. to go that route, if you want to be that crooked, right. you can actually just take care of the veteran, make sure that they're set, make sure you get, get them their health care, make sure that they're in the registry, make sure that they have everything they need. You can still keep the business or keep the business going and running. We know that's possible. Just find, just find the company for what the, what the costs are for taking care of that veteran. Yeah. Um, so for the Fort, Fort McClellan, for anybody that wants to read, um, so there's a great book called Exposure. And it's uh, so Exposure, Surviving Historical Fort McClellan. And it's written by Willem Bonk. And I've been in touch with him recently because of everything that's been going down with Fort McClellan and the Honoring or Pact Act. So if you guys are interested in helping out the Honoring or Pact Act, the bill number is uh, 3967. And then the actual Fort McClellan Health Registry Act is H.R. 2825 please contact your senators and representatives to try to get these bills moving. Thank you very much. And also don't forget, uh, Stephanie, to give us your information about yeah. how, to, uh, how to reach you and also yeah. what the Veterans Legislative Voice is about, how you started it. Uh, give us that little spiel uh, because we're running out of time a little bit. I want to make sure you get that in so people can get the snowball effect of joining your, uh, your site, getting subscribed to the content you have out there, and also, America yeah. Heroes Group, make sure you like and subscribe. On, we're on YouTube. We're also on um, ahg.org. You can see us on Genre TV Network. You can get our podcast in different places, wherever you get your podcasts. But tell us, how, how do we connect with you? So, Veterans Legislative Voice. Um, so, it's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. My website is vet, V-E-T-S, legislativevoice.org. It was started in reaction to, for, uh, to Vanessa Guillen's murder missing and then murder and so that because everybody wanted to try to to change everything that was happening with sexual harassment and assault in the military and since then it's kind of blossomed into there of helping veterans and military and civilians pretty much push for legislative change to improve the lives of the military and veterans i appreciate that stephanie that's really important for us to do that because like I said, people, we, we have strength in numbers. So as veterans, even civilians, families, people, anybody that loves veterans, make sure that you get involved with these issues because these are things we can actually um, affect and actually change. And it's, it's, I don't think it's as hard as it needs to be as far as coming up with solutions. There are straightforward solutions out there that are cost effective and don't have to necessarily be bringing down the whole house or reinventing the system or reinventing the wheel. We can do these things yeah. and protect what we already have in place, and but also take care of veterans and improve our system, which also benefits veterans and civilians in the long run. Yes, uh, re- representatives and senators also, uh, often do not know what's really going on and what's needed. They actually depend on their constituents to let them know what's important to them out there. What do we need to get changed and improve on other people's lives? They will do the work as long as they know what, what needs to be done. And briefly, tell us also, give us a preview of what's coming up next. What's the, what is, what's the biggest thing we need to be paying, putting our eye on as far as legislation um, when it comes to veterans' rights and also veterans' health care? Okay, so this is a highly controversial one, and it is Roe v. Wade for that coming out. Um, so we're waiting for that Supreme Court decision to come out on pretty much a possible overturn, but we're hoping not. It can really affect the military in veterans because of how the law is written on doing those type of things for veterans so and military so i just wanted to let everybody know out there i'd love to go in deep for with a lot of people to explain how that will affect everything so stephanie i really appreciate you stephanie for coming out stephanie colada she's a u.s army reserve sergeant first class and the veteran uh, veteran and also founder and creator of the veterans legislative voice so one thing we want to do, Stephanie, is have you one day come out to Chicago so you can see the studio we have here, see the stuff that we're working on, and also kind of maybe do a workshop and kind of get some information to the people in Illinois. Because I know if we share information, we can also do more things, do more bigger things and powerful things and get things done. 
that would be great because honestly, I also want to go into how to teach people how to look up their elected officials' voting records so they can understand whether they are actually doing the work that you need them to do to in, uh, influence and improve other people's lives. So that's w one of my biggest projects in the future. Thanks a lot, Stephanie.